we're going to be talking about what it's like to be a woman in politics. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. Joining me in the studio is Mary Ann Chambers. She's a corporate director and a former cabinet minister here in Ontario. Uh, she's got quite a, an inspiring story to tell. Now, you'll meet her in a moment. Later in the interview, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip, and you'll hear Mary Ann's. Well, hello, Mary Ann. Welcome to the show. Hello, Shannon. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's so nice having you here. Now, um, you've had a really interesting career. I mean, you worked uh, as an executive in banking uh, for a number of years. Now, you're a corporate director. Uh, you were a cabinet minister. Uh, how did you get your start in, in, in the world of banking? Well, I joined Scotiabank when I came to Canada from Jamaica in 1976. I joined as a computer programmer analyst. In fact, I arrived uh, on a Friday evening and went in for my interview on the Monday and was offered the job right away. Those were the good old days. And I joined the international systems area and in a few weeks uh, was shipped off to Bermuda for the first of three such Not uh, such a bad visits. place to be shipped off to. No, but you know, uh, I, I remembered you in my interview, I was asked how I felt about traveling on business. Now, my father had been an airline executive and we traveled often. But traveling on business is, is actually work, you know, it's, it's not necessarily fun. Fortunately, my husband has always been tremendously supportive. Now for you, um, you decided at some point that you were going to enter politics. Um, what made you decide to, to take well, a jump into the political arena? Shannon, people had always uh, suggested to me that uh, I should consider uh, elected office and I always told them I was uh, being confused with someone else. They were thinking I was someone else. It was not something I ever had an interest in doing myself. But I retired early from the bank. I had been involved uh, at senior levels on a number of not-for-profit boards. I chaired the United Way of Canada's board as vice chair at the University of Toronto, uh, you know, their governing council as president of the Canadian Club of Toronto. I was a vice chair at Rouge Valley Health System. I, I found myself enjoying my not-for-profit involvement more and more and uh, decided that it was time to, to stop juggling uh, the business world and the not-for-profit world. And what intrigued me was the, the ancient philosopher's concept of politics being about good public policy. And so I'd never been partisan. I've always believed that good ideas are not, uh, are, are, are not the sole purview of a particular party. I also think that my own party can make mistakes as well. Uh, but it was good public policy that excited me. And, uh, and so I, I did it, uh, ran, was successful, and was appointed uh, to cabinet immediately. And I served for four years. I did not seek re-election, but I am very proud of all that I accomplished as Minister of Training Colleges and Universities and Minister of Children and Youth Services. And there's still people who who see me, recognize me, and thank me for the positive impact that I had on their lives. So for you, what was it like as a woman? It's possible that, that women are seen as, as good listeners, uh, sensitive, particularly in, in the areas in which I served. Uh, I, one of the areas that, that I found um, a need for my kind of involvement was the world of autism, the world of complex special needs, child protection, um, that's the, the welfare system. I, I, you know, I would sometimes, children's mental health, I would sometimes refer to these as the easy files, 
really tongue in cheek, but I understood what families uh, went through uh, when they needed help for their kids, and so I would listen and. The, the legal aspects of, of that world did not intrigue me. I felt I was there to serve and, and, and to, to uh, support and introduce good public policy, whether in the form of, of needed legislation or opportunities for youth to be more successful. Access to opportunities has always been uh, a a pet interest of mine. From when I was a little girl in Jamaica, I taught children in the areas that um, Bob Marley wrote songs about in the summertime. And I looked forward to my summer vacations. And some of these children were older than I was, but they didn't have the opportunity to go to school on a regular basis. I learned from that experience how important education is in terms of providing opportunities for people to be successful. Marianne, for you, you decided that at some point you weren't going to pursue politics any longer. Yes. Um, what, what made you decide that? Well, uh, I, I found that uh, my term in, in, in politics was, uh, was really hard on me physically. And I think that had something to do with, with um, with the fact that I wasn't, I wasn't just a woman. A black woman in politics becomes more than just the minister for a particular portfolio or the member of provincial parliament for a particular area. The demands are huge because uh, there aren't enough of us. And I didn't, I didn't agree to serve in public office um, to do so in a half-hearted way. So I actually ran myself into the ground. I mean, that was the bottom line. For the first two months after I left, uh, I, I, I left government, I was going to a wellness center three times a week, taking care of my back and, and all the side effects that, that my back um, problems had created for me. And fortunately, I am in great shape again, but I felt that had I run again in 2007, I would not have been able to to do as much, to work as hard, to to commit uh, the way I had for my my four years. And so sometimes we do have to take care of ourselves in order to be able to take care of others. So, uh, Marianne, we just have to take a quick break, and I know um, that you've got a great success tip. It's now my, my good to know minute. So, for you then, what would be your key to success? Shannon, my key to success is to take full responsibility for what I expect to achieve. To be a, a, a conscientious contributor and leader in wherever I find myself. Well, that's good to know. Thanks for sharing. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Marianne Chambers. So stay where you are. <music> Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Marianne Chambers. I'm uh, really enjoying um, this conversation and hearing about uh, your life. Now, you have... I mean, you've had a number of awards. You've, you've uh, been honored with a number of um, um, awards and, and recognition, but you've got a new one. Every award is unique to me and very special in its own way. Um, I will be receiving a vice chancellor's award from the University of the West Indies. Now, I'm not a University of the West Indies graduate. However, I have tremendous respect for the con contributions that the University of the West Indies uh, has made in, in Canada, you know, I, I was on, I served on the board of, of a hospital here in Ontario, where at 
the time, the chief of surgery, the chief of pediatrics, and the chief of psychology were all University of the West Indies graduates. And so I, I, am, I am so grateful for this honor when, in fact, my alma mater is a different university, but I have so much respect for the University of the West Indies. And I do uh, what I can to, to encourage relationships between the University of the West Indies and, and universities here in Canada so that they are actually mutually beneficial. And for more information, uh, I would love your viewers to, to check the website uwitorontogala.com. The, uh, the university is uh, approximately 45,000 students throughout the Caribbean, many different nations in the Caribbean. And uh, it, it, it started in 1948 as a college of the University of London and uh, came into its own as the University of the West Indies in 1962 and has uh, amazing uh, graduates and, uh, and, and um, Rhodes Scholars and you name it, to its, to its uh, credit. It's a fantastic university. Now, Marianne, um, I have one last question. Uh, for all that you've done now in your remarkable career, um, if you could turn back the clock, would you change anything? Uh, I have sometimes thought that, um, well, actually, it's a lot of people who have encouraged me to write my story. And if I were to do so, I, ha I, I would use the title A Charmed Life. I have been so fortunate and um, fortunate in my personal life, you know, my husband, my children, my grandchildren, uh, their wives, uh, parents who, who raised me to feel that I had an important part to play in this world. And I do believe that the world should be better because I existed. And um, that peace and contentment, I think, has defined who I am. And for anything that I have been able to contribute to the betterment or the success of others, I feel truly grateful to have had the opportunity. Well, Marianne, thank you so much for being here today thank and you, sharing Sharon. your story. Uh, and I, I wish you all the best. Congratulations on your award. Thank and, you. uh, and I certainly hope our paths cross again. I hope so, too. Thank you. I've been speaking with Mary Ann Chambers. Now, if you are interested in finding out more about past guests, past episodes, uh, more about the show, and to contact me, I'd encourage you to visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. Follow me on Twitter. I post lots of updates, uh, so you can follow me there for sure. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.